Hello? Are you ready? Yes. Wouldn't it be cool if we all had theme songs? I mean, imagine you're walking along with a theme song playing. Yeah, it'd make a lot of noise pollution in, like, large groups of people. <laughs> well, maybe if you could just turn it on and off at will. If someone asks what your mood is, just switch on your own personal score. It would probably save a lot of time on explaining things. I've always thought the White Stripes Seven Nation Army would be a fantastic theme song. I hum it to myself whenever I'm walking around feeling cool. <laughs> Alas, a more accurate theme song for me is probably... Uh... Totally. I'm picturing it like 
like people's court or, or judge duty with people standing at the pearly gates having to plead their case over really insignificant stuff. Hello and welcome to Splitting Hairs with God, the show where you plead your case to the big guy himself. You win, you're in, you lose, well, it is down to those fiery pits. First up, we have John Smith. Back in 1997, his girlfriend was really sick, which meant she was having a terrible hair day. When she asked how she looked, John said, she looked fine. Is this true? Well, uh, Answer the question. Yes, it is, but she was sick, and I was just trying to make her How feel better. How bad was the hair? I don't know, sort of like, uh, <laughs> like you see this when I read a music video. That is a bad hair. Your girlfriend looked like that in the 90s, no less, and I don't know if I can let this one But survive. she was sick. <laughs> nah, I'm just asking you, Jane, man. Come on, man. Now the team to John Smith. Yes, John Smith has been led into heaven, despite having told a lie that his girlfriend with Flock of Seagull's hair looks good. Amazing! The Lord truly does work in mysterious ways. <laughs> Man, I miss being able to riff with you. I couldn't find anyone to come up with random bits with. Wait, I thought you found yourself a girlfriend. Or not be able to be uh, here. Oh, she's a total goofball, but it's different with you. We've got 14 years of history. Lucy got plenty of time to get you. That sounds quite serious. Give me a second to get in position for this one. <laughs> All right, details. You guys have a she's freaking awesome. She's smart, funny, pretty. I mean, I've never been happier than when I'm with her. I mean, I am sorry. We've had some great times, but the rest of the time... I know, I know. There's no comparison with a girlfriend. <laughs> I know this is a loaded question, but you've got any prospects? Nope. I asked a couple girls out, but just can't seem to get out of the platonic friend category. It's a curse. Or maybe a superpower. <laughs> I'm a platonic man. He's a guy and he's your friend. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should be more aggressive. Well, only if they're inviting to the idea. I don't get invitations. Sure you do, you just don't realize it. You <laughs> that or mean women. No, I I'm the one sending out invitations, but no one ever RSV. Oh, I see. Self-replication is still your preferred way of belling the pain of being single. What about that time you were at the movies and a group of girls asked you to sit with them and you said, no, that's okay, I'm fine. That was a pretty clear invitation. Yeah, yeah, though. I know. I, I never should have told you about that one. I swear, it was the combination of crispy M&Ms and Mountain Dew that temporarily made me insane. Or maybe it was a combination of the two that acted as a pheromone. Because didn't you say they approached you after the movie? Yeah, and I clammed up again. It's a useless pheromone if it also makes you a complete We just need to find a missing ingredient. <laughs> maybe Doritos. <laughs> cool ranch? that all make me cool? Exactly. <laughs> Let's face it, when it comes to women, I'm always going to be an awkward turtle lab. What about women? What about her? We're friends. I'm able to relax. In fact, she's coming here after I close up to hang out. You know, she's single now, right? <laughs> Not helping. I'm firmly in the friend zone there. Well, I know you're really hung up on that, but I'm pretty sure the friend zone is more in your head than anything what else. What are you talking about? You've branched about the friend zone just as much as I have. Lucy and I were friends first. We met at a frat party. We didn't like the scene, so we got out of it. And then you spent all night talking, and you both knew that you were meant no, to be together. No, no, no. You liked each other, so we started hanging out a lot. After a couple months, we realized that any free time we had, we were spending with each other. And that seemed like a solid enough definition for falling in love, so <laughs> we decided, why fight it? If we had put labels or expectations on it sooner, we probably would have screwed it up. And believe me, I know it's an ideal situation. I don't now. know if my brain can work that way. Yeah. I'd constantly be trying to figure out the situation. When it comes to making the next move, I, I what just What I'm can't. saying is when it is the right person, we wouldn't have to make a move. Just fly free, man. If you keep telling women you're only friends material, that's what they'll see you as. You know, I, I know you're sweet on Gwen. She knows it too. So, so what are you saying? When she gets here, I should ask her out? No, I'm saying go with the flow. Be her friend, but don't see that as a bad thing. Don't put pressure on yourself to be more than that. And maybe you'd like to become more. Just think about it. Just think about what? Oh, hi, Gwen! <laughs> Uh, I was just telling Will here if you do not plus one to a wedding. I'd already said I was bringing a date, but my girlfriend Lucy can't make it after all, so... Uh, I, I hate to waste a perfectly good filet mignon. Whatever it takes for a nice date. That's the spirit. Yeah, well, and that's settled. Let me get out of your hair. I know you guys have a little play date schedule. I don't want to intrude. Yes, that's it. It's fine by me. No, Will and I have already cut up. I'm going to have to hear the same stories all over again. Boring. <laughs> well, you kids are fine. It was good seeing you. Yeah, be cool. So, <laughs> I'm a bit tired. I didn't get much sleep last night, but I'm excited to see you, old buddy, old pal. So, what do you have in mind for this evening? 
I thought we could hang here. The owner doesn't mind, and we can watch whatever we want and have all the free popcorn we can eat. Oh, all right, slumber party at the video store. Well, I wasn't thinking we'd stay in the night. That would be cool. Besides, it is for just such occasions that I keep a collection of blankets and pillows in my car at all times. You never know when you may need to crash somewhere, or in the case of my shipbox car, when you're stranded on the side of the road in the middle of winter. <laughs> All right, our sleepover it is, then. Awesome, I'll go get the blanket. <laughs> All right. Do a place. Be cool. Be cool? Be cool about what? Oh, uh, be cool. It, it's a movie I thought we could watch. It, it's the sequel to Get Shorty. Oh, I haven't seen it. Any good? Uh, not really. Well, I mean, it's not bad. There's this one scene with Dwayne Johnson where he plays a gay bodyguard who wants to be an actor, and his audition scene is from the movie Bring It All. The cheerleading movie with Kirsten Dunst? Yeah, and he plays both Kirsten Dunst and Gabrielle Union's part in the scene where they're telling each other to bring it. It's pretty hilarious. We could watch that part. That does sound awesome. But first, we need to plan for this wedding that you're going to with Clay. I'm so jealous you get to go to a wedding. Really? I didn't take you as the wedding type. Oh, yeah. They're a great place to create another persona. I should have known you don't just go to a wedding. Hey, you never see half those people at those things ever again, so I treat it as the ultimate improv stage. Except nobody else knows that they're participating. If they're up for it, I'll let my date play along. Staying in character and not screwing up the backstory is a commitment. I don't think I could do the whole free a character thing. Sure you could. I've seen you come up with little comedy routines with Clay all the yeah, time. Yeah, that's just us goofing off, though. I feel like if I'm around other people, I start laughing or give it away somehow. That's why you need practice. Ha! We'll do one right now. Okay, so we're a couple at a wedding, and somebody asks us how we first met. Say it as if you're telling the story to someone. Oh, wait. <laughs> Here, say it to this poster. Okay, first thing that pops in your head. Go. Uh, uh, we <laughs> met the first time I, I tried water skiing. Because you figured, hey, I downhill ski, how different could it be? But but it didn't go well. I, I, I couldn't even stand up, and, and, I, and I let go of the rope. I didn't know the people with the boat, they were friends of friends of a friend. And just for kicks, they decided to leave them in the water as they sped around the lake. So, so there I was, bobbing around in the lake. I was swimming in the lake. I was doing the backstroke with my eyes closed. <laughs> Probably not the best idea, but I was into the whole zen bit one little thing at the time. And that is when I swam into Will head first. Uh, I'd seen her around school before, so so I knew of her, but this was our first time meeting face to face. Or head to back. <laughs> of course I apologize for swimming in, didn't he? He explained to me what had happened, and I decided to keep him company until the guys with the boat came back. When the boat came back, I offered her a ride, and she didn't accept I didn't want to impose. I wasn't pleased with these guys, so so I asked them to take me ashore. Uh, they left me on the beach, and after a while, I realized they ditched me. So now I didn't have a ride home. I didn't know anyone on the beach, so I waited for Gwen to come ashore. When I did, he explained to me what had happened and begged me for a ride. When, when she was dropping me off, I, I asked her if she'd like to go out sometime. See? <laughs> I knew you had it in you. Fun, isn't it? Well, that's just us goofing around. You know? I just don't think we're in front of others. Uh, we'll go to the mall and practice on some unsuspecting tourists. It'll be a date. Yeah, a fake one. Story of my oh, life. Oh, no, not this again. Don't you grow tired of talking about this all the time? Yes, yes, I do. Trust me. I, I don't mean to. I was just having fun, and then the next second, the pessimistic voice in the back of my head kicks in. No, I get that. I've actually been thinking a lot about this, and I think I've discovered the root of my insecurities. If if you'd like to hear. Oh, story time. I love a good story. <laughs> it's not exactly the feel-good hit of the summer. That's okay. If you want to tell the story, I want to hear it. Okay. When I was in seventh grade, I didn't have many friends, so I wanted to make some new ones. I asked this guy if he'd like to join my dad and me to see a movie. He said no, but and then proceeded to tell people that I asked him out on a date. You know, pretty soon I had a group of guys who would hit on me, you know, rub my leg and stuff like that. When I went to the principal about it, he actually gave me the old, you must have been asking for it speech. Are you serious? Yeah. He did nothing to stop it. And this went on for almost the whole school year until my parents intervened and threatened to sue the school. That's fucking ridiculous. Why are people so willing to ignore harassment and victim blame? That really pisses me off. I, I don't know, but 
I, I was too hurt and confused to be angry. It, 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 it got to the point where I started questioning my sexuality. For the longest time, I thought everyone thought I was gay. And just as I was finally getting over it, this guy at college shouts, BAG, as I'm crossing the street a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, like, do I just scream gay? Am I missing something? No, but you're a skinny, well-dressed, well-mannered young man. To a meathead frat boy, that's gay. Of course that's why you're awesome. Goddamn societal pressure is trying to shape us all to be one way. It's okay to break the mold. That's easy for you to say. You're, you're not inhibited, I and mean, you're confident. That part of me is broken. The mere thought of approaching people, even those I know, terrifies me. And strangers? Forget about it. You think I have it all together? Trust me, I can relate to being hurt, confused, and angry. I didn't have the best experience at that age either. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Middle school sucked for everyone. I, I should well, get shut over up. It. That's not what I'm getting at. You were brave and shared something, so I'm going to do the same. I developed early. At 13, I pretty much looked like I do now. Guys who just a year earlier were my friends didn't know how to act around me. They were intimidated and started teasing me. You know the whole be mean to the girl you like thing? Fancy myself a mature woman, I started dating 16 and 17 year olds. Of course the topic of sex came up. This one guy kept pressing it even though I kept saying I wasn't ready. Eventually, to please him, I gave in because I wanted him to like me. It wasn't my proudest moment, and I sure wasn't giggling with my friends about losing my virginity. I was full of shame and regret. So I swore off older guys. I wanted to go back to the immature boys, but word got around fast that I was easy. Soon, all guys wanted from me on dates was sex. Or, oh come on, how about a hand job or a blow job? I'm surprised you didn't know about any of this. I, I, I was probably too busy being concerned with my own rumors. Fair enough. Anyway, at 14, I swore off dating altogether. Soon the rumors changed from me being easy to me being a lesbian. For a while, I kind of leaned into it. The short haircut and overalls look, trashy. <laughs> I seriously <laughs> contemplated defecting to the other side. I've always had a fascination with breasts. No argument here. <laughs> the female form is much more appealing than the male one. I mean, we have a sausage and a bag of nuts dangling between our legs. That's not exactly visually appealing. Yeah, well, breasts are just sacks of fat hanging off our chest. Admittedly, they can be quite lovely sacks of fat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why'd you decide to not give up on men? Well, I can't deny chemistry. I'm attracted to men. I met John, and he reminded me that not all guys are pot scum. He had heard the rumors, but he didn't care. He just wanted to spend as much time as he could with me. We did fool around, but he always let me set the pace. Clay told me you broke up. What happened? It was actually supposed to be a break, so we could both explore our options in college. His idea, I was livid when he first suggested it. Still, I'd rather he be honest with his intentions than cheat on me, but I didn't want to do that. Did, did, did it feel like a betrayal? Like like he was just one of those guys after all? Yeah, at first. But I get it. You live in a small town your whole life, and you're going to be meeting people from all over the country and world in college, and I totally get wanting that freedom. I just know that if he found someone else and I didn't, it would be devastating. I'd rather break it off on good terms. If he wants to explore his options in college, all oh, the more power to him. A couple years ago it would have really bothered me, but I know it has more to do with him than me. I, I, I am Mr. Rational, but you know, I think my insecurities would have gotten the better of me in that situation. You know, I'd be trying to figure out what I did wrong. How were you able to beat your insecurities? Before meeting John, I entered my experimental phase. Scratch that, that's not sexual. My uh, <laughs> phase of self-discovery. Basically went through all the characters of The Breakfast Club until I figured out who I was. A patchwork of all the styles. I bounced around between cliques and gathered friends from all of them. I refused to judge others the way I had been, and I didn't let others or my past define me. I kind of did the same thing in high school. You know, I, I called myself a floater because I didn't belong to any one clique. I could go in and out of groups and was more or less accepted. 
No, I, I just lacked the confidence to go beyond that. I, I didn't want to take a risk again and have it blow up in my face. I understand, but you're luckier than most people. You actually know who you are, you just need to trust yourself. I know, I'm my own worst enemy. You know what's ironic? I complain all the time about getting rejected, but when I had an actual girlfriend, Wait, I don't Wait, what? Know. How did I not know about this? Mr. No One Wants to Date Me had a girlfriend? Yeah. We dated for three months when I was a junior. We rarely hugged, never cuddled. We did hold hands. We only saw each other at school because her brains were bad and her dad grounded her all the time, so we talked a lot on the phone. That was basically the extent of our relationship. We did go on two dates, one movie and prom. Our one kiss was at prom, and I had to ask for it. During Baby Got Back, <laughs> my timing was impeccable. Only you! Here's where I'm an idiot. I broke up with her over the phone. Oh, that is a dick move. Yeah, and she acted like it was mutual, and we talked on the phone for another hour after that, and everything seemed fun. Yeah! No! <laughs> Why am I so dumb? Why'd you break up with her anyway? Yeah, I didn't think the relationship was going anywhere. After I just told you how I was pressured into sex, you better not mean physically. Yeah, but... Will! Damn it, I thought you weren't just another guy trying to get laid. I, I, I wasn't. I, I thought that's what was supposed to happen in a relationship. You know, if, if you can't be intimate with someone, how is it that you can bring in a friendship? Oh, you don't have to have sex to be intimate. There's kissing, cuddling, sexual Yeah, and I wasn't getting any of that. Well, so what? You thought I want to ask for sex? No, it, it, it was more complicated than that. As I said, our relationship was mostly over the phone. She was my first girlfriend. I was excited, so it was, um, do you want to have sex? Oh, you said no, you dumped her? No, it wasn't like that. I, 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 rich coming from me, but but I saw her as a friend. You know, she asked me out. I, it was the first girl who ever showed interest in me like that, and, and I was flattered, so I said yes. Even though you didn't feel that way about her, you were still willing to have sex with her. Can I blame hormones? No. I, I, I don't know. I was 17, okay, and there's this tremendous pressure on guys who lose their virginity. I mean, look at how many freaking American Pie movies they made. So you were willing to take <laughs> advantage of a girl because you knew that she liked you? No, it wasn't like that at all. I didn't really care about the sex. I, part of it was probably the need to prove to myself and others that I wasn't gay because I was still so confused. I mean, I, I, I knew I wasn't attracted to guys, but I wasn't a manly man. I, I, I don't know. I, I was a stupid, confused, hormonal teen. The truth is, I liked someone else. It just felt nice to know someone actually liked me. I had never felt that before, and, and I was too scared to take the chance on asking the girl I actually liked out to. If you say it was me, I will punch you. <laughs> um, I... <laughs> no. How is that possible? You didn't even know me that. I, I, I knew of you. We, we, we had mutual friends. You know, I, I saw you going through your experimental phase from afar, and, and, and I admired your confidence. One week you were a pumper, and, and the next you had a 50s beehive. I remember that week. That was a good week. <laughs> <laughs> you were, and, and, and are, fearless. And, and you seemed like so much fun. I, I, I took the safe bet. I knew my heart really wasn't in it, so, so, so I broke it off. When I started hugging you, I must have thrown you for a loop. To say the least. But, but you were with John at that point, so, so I didn't say anything. I was just happy to actually get to know you. No, I'm single, so you're bringing all of this up. No, no, I didn't plan any of this. All, all I wanted to do tonight was watch some movies with you. Are you I, sure you didn't have a crush on me because you heard the sex rumors? No, no, I swear, tonight was the first I I've heard of it. And, and I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm a guy, so I think about sex, but I, I don't want to be one of those guys. Yeah, who calm come. down. Maybe you're, you're not mad at me? No. Yeah. I was, and not anymore. I know you think I'm fearless, but I'm not. I still have my insecurities and hang-ups. I don't have it all figured out. I just learned to trust myself most of the time. I still have things that trigger me. Sex is still a sensitive subject for me, and you touched a nerve. I'm sorry for lashing out on you. I know you're a good guy. It's okay. I'm glad you're in my life. I'm glad you're in my life, too. You definitely keep things lively. <laughs> I'm interested to see where it goes from here. Where it 
goes from here? What does that mean? Does she want me to ask her out? Oh god, does she want to have sex? Oh no, you idiot, she just said sex was a sensitive subject for her. Alright, 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 stop. Oh, you need to stop. This is where you get yourself in trouble. You know, right now I really do wish I could hit a switch and have a score start playing and tell me how I'm feeling, because, because I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm feeling exposed and vulnerable for the things I've shared, and, and I'm happy that Gwen is my friend, but, but I'm confused about how I feel toward her. I mean, would I want to date her? Yes, but, but I'm scared of screwing it up. I mean, what if I lost her? And I know it's okay to be feeling all these things at once, but I just, I wish there was one dominant emotion. Maybe if I start whistling, my theme song will reveal itself. <laughs> Thank you.